McDonald's, no doubt, is one of the most recognizable brands on the planet. We can spot those golden arches from miles away. Our mouths salivate at the thought of a hot Big Mac and a box of crisp fries. While that's certainly not the healthiest knee-jerk reaction in the world, it just goes to show how powerful good branding and advertising can be. But what if we told you that McDonald's wasn't making its money from flipping patties and frying fries? McDonald's is actually a real estate conglomerate. So how exactly does McDonald's actually make their profits? Post-Great Depression America saw a massive boom in technology and business. More and more Americans began driving, and as a result, drive-up restaurants rose in popularity. However, the only difference between these drive-ups and a typical dining experience at the time was where you ate your food. You still had a waiter who came out to the car to take your order. You still had to wait for that food to be prepared by a chef and brought out to you on reusable dinnerware. You ate in your car, and when you were done, you returned your plates and silverware to the restaurant. The McDonald brothers sought to change that. In 1948, Richard and Maurice McDonald opened the first McDonald's location in San Bernardino, California. It was known for what the brothers called Speedy Service System, and offered 15 cent hamburgers faster than anybody had seen at the time. The restaurant worked like a well-oiled machine, churning out massive amounts of food in record time. The McDonald brothers also did away with reusable silverware and instead packaged their finger food in disposable wrappings. Then along came Ray Kroc, a milkshake machine salesman that had been doing business with the McDonald brothers. He saw the opportunity for growth that was sitting right under their noses, and he only needed one word. Franchise. Skeptical at first, the brothers agreed to let Ray take full responsibility of the restaurants he franchised. They agreed to take one half of 1% of the sales brought in by Ray's restaurants. Ray, at the time, may have bitten off more than he could chew. His franchising plan focused solely on licensing and royalties. Potential owners were responsible for buying the land and building the restaurant itself, obviously an expensive undertaking. That's when Ray met a man named Harry Sonneborn. An American businessman at the time, Sonneborn would soon become the first president and chief executive of the McDonald's Corporation, and he did so by tweaking Kroc's business plan. Sonneborn's plan was simple. McDonald's would own the land and the building. They would then lease the building out to owners for a marked up monthly rent. His idea would blow the doors off the McDonald's brand and turn it into the global real estate powerhouse it is today. Here's how it works. McDonald's owns the land and the building. A private entrepreneur whose lifelong dream was to own and operate a McDonald's agrees to lease the property and assume the day-to-day -day responsibilities. Let's use some digestible numbers as an example. Let's say McDonald's pays $10,000 a month for a property. They'd charge the franchisee $12,000 per month rent, a 20% upcharge. However, that upcharge has increased over the years as McDonald's has learned how much money they can truly make by leasing properties rather than owning them outright. Today, rent can be as high as a 40% upcharge on the value of the property. Rent can also be calculated as 10.7% of the restaurant's sales, and such deals are agreed upon at the time of signing. Of course, the rental price of operating McDonald's is all about location. Rent isn't the only expense that the owner's on the hook for. They're also charged an initial $45,000 investment to use McDonald's image and likeness. McDonald's has been raking in more than $19 billion per year since 2005. The company peaked in 2013 with $28 billion in total revenue. They have, however, been on a slight decline in recent years, bottoming out at $19 billion for 2020. McDonald's largest profit margin comes from their franchised restaurants. Get ready for this figure. There are over 36,000 McDonald's restaurants around the world, but McDonald's only owns and operates 15% of them. Capitalizing on rent keeps McDonald's in the green even during economic hardships. They aren't worried about how many burgers their restaurants are selling. All they care about is collecting rent. You may be wondering what it's like owning McDonald's. First, eager entrepreneurs must submit an application to be considered. Upon approval, they must go through a rigorous and unpaid 9-12 to 12 month training program to learn everything there is to know about operating McDonald's. They pretty much ascend the ladder from burger chef to branch manager. However, it's not as easy or affordable as it sounds. 
Potential franchisees will need a massive sum of cash to get started. Business Insider estimates the initial investment to be between one and two million dollars. This investment covers everything from down payments, equipment, building upgrades, remodeling, and inventory stock. Furthermore, 40% of the initial startup cost must be paid in cash or non-borrowed funds. The rest can be financed. According to McDonald's, the average cost over the first three months of opening a new restaurant is between $400,000 and $2.2 million. While the difference is staggering, it all comes down to location. McDonald's makes a killing off the leasing of properties because it's the restaurant owners that are on the hook for business expenses, not the corporation. After paying what they owe in rent and royalty fees, owners still need to manage payroll, inventory, bills, and other costs associated with running a business in general. They don't really need to spend money on advertising since the Golden Arches sell themselves. Of course, you could always look at their royalty fees as their advertising costs. Those royalty fees equal about 4% of the restaurant's monthly sales. At the end of the year, McDonald's owners make an average of $150,000 per year. However, that's compared to the $2.7 million in total sales brought in by the average McDonald's restaurant. Some quick maths tell us that the average operating cost of McDonald's is $2.5 million. McDonald's isn't the only company with its hands in the real estate pool. Fast food rivals like Burger King operate using a similar business model. If you prefer to operate a Burger King, it'll still cost upwards of $1.8 to $3.2 million to open a Burger King. However, the average Burger King only generates $1.4 million in total revenue, almost half of what the average McDonald's rakes in. On the other side of the aisle is Chick-fil-A, with an average store revenue of $4.1 million. Unlike McDonald's and Burger King, your initial investment to get into a Chick-fil-A is only $10,000. However, Chick-fil-A owners are more like glorified managers. They don't have any real ownership over the store. Furthermore, it's incredibly difficult to buy into a Chick-fil-A in the first place. Although they receive thousands and thousands of applications per year, they only open between 80 to 100 restaurants. So let's say you've decided to open a restaurant. The decision you have in front of you is simple. Start from scratch or franchise an existing brand. Starting from scratch comes with its obvious risks. Nobody knows who you are, how your food is, or what it'll cost them to eat at your establishment. However, you retain full control of your business and don't have to adhere to any standards set by your corporate overlord. On the flip side, franchising McDonald's covers you as far as building a brand is concerned. You end up paying to use their image and likeness while maintaining some wiggle room regarding how you run your particular McDonald's restaurant. McDonald's saw dips in their overall revenue starting in 2015. Market economists attribute this to the rise of what they call fast casual restaurants like Chipotle and Five Guys. While still franchised establishments, these restaurants offer a higher quality meal in relatively the same amount of time. For example, the average wait time for a McDonald's drive-thru in 2014 was over three minutes, which is the longest it's been in 15 years. Now, think about how long it takes to get in and out of Chipotle. Not too long, right? For a little more patience and penny, you can get a higher quality niche meal of your choosing and watch the employees make it right before your eyes. The funniest part about the McDonald's Chipotle relationship is that McDonald's owned 90% of Chipotle between 1998 and 2006. The burger chain pulled out of the burrito game to quote, put 100% of their efforts into the McDonald's brand. Moving forward in the post COVID world, McDonald's has announced their plans to spend upwards of $2.3 billion through 2022. About half of that money will go towards opening new restaurants that they can then lease to new franchisees. To investors, New restaurants being built and leased spell big money for an organization that relies so heavily on its real estate driven business model. These new stores will see some innovative testing as McDonald's looks to sharpen its business model and maximize profits for themselves and store owners. The COVID-19 pandemic taught them about the importance of their drive through lanes and how they can better utilize them. They stated that a vast majority of new restaurants opening in 2021 and 22 will include drive through lanes. Some of them will even feature lanes dedicated to digital orders made through the McDonald's app or automated order taking. 
Of course, such changes put a smile on the face of owners who don't have to pay a computer to take orders. Unfortunately, that leaves human workers on the sidelines. McDonald's also plans on expanding its chicken-based menu items as the poultry market is currently outpacing beef. Furthermore, McDonald's will expand efforts to target coffee drinkers. Since caffeine is the most consumed drug in the world, it would make sense for a business famous for the McMuffin to double down on its coffee output. But all that planning is arguably meant to bolster higher percentages raked in from independent owners. The more money a store makes, the more the corporation takes in on royalties. Because McDonald's real estate market is so strong, investors have been hounding the company to lease 100% of their restaurants. Let's think about these numbers for a moment. In 2014, McDonald's grossed $27.4 billion in revenue. About $9 billion came from franchised restaurants. The other $18 billion came from restaurants they own. While it sounds like McDonald's is making more money off the restaurants they own, they're making considerably more money off the restaurants they lease. 